sorry about that. So we can start our daily stand up. Good morning, everyone. Uh, yeah, but while we join our short piece, so ask this about question with him as well. But let's start with how are you guys in how is the performance of uh, the project? So any volunteers like usual? Anyone who is going to break the present? Who's going to speak? Who's going to break the silence? Okay, thank you, Michael. You can start sharing. Good morning, everyone. Uh, yesterday, I tried to write the interim report and the uh, GitHub link. Uh, but uh, I struggled uh, uh, with the annotation or labeling the assets because there are many folders and the uh, tutorials in the documentation. I saw was like there are many images in one folder, so they, they are they are trying to label some manually. Some of them they they use some models like YOLO V5 or something. Then they try to uh, label all the other data. So I was trying that. Uh, thank you. Okay, great. Any other person who want to add up with Michael's struggles? And also share their. Okay, Michael, go ahead. Okay, so another question. So there are assets we are gonna use. So does does we use the asset for the training part, or do we use it to to make the uh, storyboards, or do we classify them as a training and use some of them for training purpose? Sorry for generating the storyboard. When you say training, are you training a model with assets? No, I mean like the composition part, like the uh, the task two and three. Yeah, I mean the assets are you you will use them for compositions. So after compositions, the next step is creating the storyboard, right? That is the process. So the composed image will be used for the storyboard, and the assets that you have right now are separated. I think they are not composed. You will use them to the image composition process. No, okay. So, so, so finally, like the pros that so the final, like we have some image. So, at the end of the day, do we do we add our own image from the assets or from another source? Then, uh, when we give the like, for example, the logo, the background image, and the call of action button from our assets or from another source, then the using task two or task three, we will get the positioning and the color and other things, right? Then okay. we yeah, get the that, Since I didn't see the data in detail, uh, those data images that you have, are they enough to create some advertising component from what yes. you see? There are 900 folders, so in in one folder there are eight or nine uh, images. So uh, one of the image, like one of the image is uh, the review, review, and there are uh, a frame in the frame. Sorry, there is in in the frame part. So. The remaining five images are like the component of or the part of the either the preview image or the end frame in my understanding so uh, yeah those are the individual elements in that uh, image then the, the big like the frame the big the main part is the preview and the end frame so from what you say you have enough data so you don't and you don't have to look for other image or do image generation you can just focus on the image that you have, do the image composition, and the image composition output will be used to create the storyboard. 
that is the, the process at the end. The storyboard is the final output. The frames that you create by combining by composition this image asset that you have is image composition. The, you will find the frames that are composed image, which you finally uh, put it in the storyboard. You get it right? Yeah. So we so we use this asset for the gen to generate the storyboard. Exactly. Okay. You will use them for image composition, then the final product, the storyboard will be the final product. Okay, thank you. Kitacho? Okay, thank you. Uh, I think to just to add on the idea of Michael's, to my uh, idea, to, uh, I thought he was trying to say that what will be the output of this, uh, our project, is that only the storyboard that we have been going so and then are these are those the outputs or uh, let's let's uh, say there are uh, users of our uh, outputs on in the coming uh, days or are we going uh, to give them the storyboard or uh, any system that can generate uh, storyboards like ours that's uh, my, my concern i think maybe if michael's concern was that too, uh, he was trying to clarify that okay uh, and, uh, okay Okay. okay. I'm confused on how you think about this. You're saying that, just repeatedly, you're saying there is a storyboard, the final output. Mm -hmm. What is the other thing that you are thinking? Yeah, the, uh, I, I was thinking that, uh, that we should have other uh, outputs, uh, not only the storyboards are, should be our outputs on this challenge. That's what, uh, that's what confusing me. Like what? What kind of outputs? Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe, yeah, maybe uh, an algorithm that can create storyboards like uh, we uh, we compose and create uh, this way or something else. If uh, only the outputs uh, of uh, this challenge are the storyboards, we can go uh, as you have uh, suggested. I mean, but, uh, but, just, uh, like, okay, go ahead, finish. But uh, we are going to be the uh, to give the final outputs of this uh, asset. So, how will uh, Arlido or some uh, company like X can use uh, these outputs? But uh, are we going to give? It will be a spoon feeding thing like that. If so, well, that that would be good. We can uh, give our time on composition and uh, storyboard creation. I mean, it's a big task creating an automatic system to do image composition in the storyboard but by itself from what i know i do do is showing their clients by putting their final products in storyboard so how they will interact with their clients so in the traditional way they will you do it ma manually by creating this ui designs that right now you are using automatic generation to do the composition in the possible uh, storyboards that are approved by the critics that you're going to put using AutoJ. So this process is not uh, as simple as we talk about. It, it can be really hard when you go to the practical part. So being able to, to do all these things in automatic way using LLM is really, uh, is, is, is a big thing as it is. I just don't cut up with the step that I mentioned. It's not as simple as that, getting a, the right resolution image and everything to give the final product to the users. That's how their clients are seeing their final optional outputs with the storyboard. So if you have other ideas to give the output, you can, we are welcome to do that, that on the documentation, uh, you are expected to build a storyboard using the assets that you have by passing the composition, the critique and everything. Is, is that clear? I mean, I, I don't think there is a, another thing mentioned in the documentation, right? That's asking you to build a storyboard at the end. I don't know if I'm wrong. Yeah, that is, I'm seeing the documentation as well. The final output is expected to be a storyboard. 
Is that clear or still that confused? Seems for me. Hmm? That seems clear for me. Sorry, I didn't catch the last word. That seems clear for me. Thank you. Okay, okay great. So you can follow the documentation as well. Okay, Michael, you can add up. Okay, so so that means we are creating an automated system that that uh, that inputs or that accepts assets then that then gives a story word generally, right? Yeah, accepts assets and create image. I mean, image composition. Then the next step would be the story creation. That all these steps are being created and created by the critic that you're going to be using autogen so the last out storyboard output should pass by the critic saying it's good enough for the client needs okay so so after we build this automated system like uh, we can test it with our own data or we can test it with uh, given assets yeah i mean the critic purpose is evaluating your storyboard creation I mean, if you read the documentation, that's the, the image composition is also you going to be created using Autogen, right? Yes. Yeah, the Autogen will create, and those created composition will be uh, created. The next step will be building the storyboard, and the critic will give evaluation on the created storyboard. This is all happening automatically. Then if the final output of the critic is, you know, passed, that will be your final output product, the one that passed uh, the entire step perfectly with the client needs. Okay, okay, thank you. Javis? Okay, good morning. Uh, are we using the uh, LLM for creating the uh, image composition? Uh, sorry, could you repeat? I'm sorry. Okay, are, are we using uh, LLM models for creating the image composition? Uh, you can use the agent to accord the documentation. You, you are expected to use agents to do the image composition as well, using different tools by connecting with the agents that perform image composition, either could be or some more, you know, what agents do. Okay, not nice. Okay, I just want to add on that, uh, Rahmat. Okay. Okay, so, uh, Yavid, uh, for the imo image co composition part, uh, if you have, if you manage to find uh, a good LLM that can actually interpret what you are telling it to do, so, for example, let's say you have a logo asset and you want to, to, to put the logo asset on the top left corner, and if you can actually interpret that, uh, using an LLM, that's great. But if not, uh, I suggest you use uh, your own Python uh, algorithm and you just made a function code for your agent. So uh, by uh, by then you you construct or compose your image uh, using Pilot. So I'll just share the official documentation here, and also I, I have shared it on Slack. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay, yeah, so either we use LLM for creating the image composition directly, or we are using an agent that uses a function to uh, create uh, image composition. Uh, sorry, uh, can you repeat that? Okay, so I, I think you are giving two options. One is the LLM will directly create the image composition, if it's possible, LLM directly creating the image composition, or an agent using a function to create uh, image composition, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay, I get that. Thank you. Okay, so uh, let's go to the next person. Pass blockers in question as well. Who's going to share next?
someone could you should i call names if you can participate it would be nice yeah and also if any of you who has any questions and facing any issues you can ask yeah. since uh yeah is in the in the call yeah abdul rahman Abdurrahman, you can speak up. Uh, hello, good morning. Good morning, good everyone. Morning. Uh, sorry, uh, I'm not sure if you answered Mahmouba question. Uh, it's in the chat box. So if you, sorry, my internet is uh, too bad. So I think there is a delay. Can you please uh, answer Mahmouba question in the chat box? Okay, uh, last night, Yabi, you want to take this one? Uh, I can't read the question since I joined late. Okay. Uh, my own you are... Maybe can yeah. you paste it yeah. again? She's asking, maybe yeah. Oh. yeah, the, just answer my last question. Okay, so uh, why, why, why do you want to label them? And I'm confused about why why you are going. Why why do you need to label? Them? So already logo is a logo and CTA button is a CTA button. So from what perspective are you saying labeling? Maybe if you sorry from my understanding no, but... for you all, I I thought I I need to no you to label you them. label a position. You label a position. So, for example, let's say, you know, uh, you detect. Let's say you have an you have a, a frame, and you have assets. So, since you have individual assets and you have a frame, you can just detect those assets in the frame, and you can just get the position. And as I've mentioned earlier, in the in the CSV files that have an engagement rate and the click through rate, you you can just grab those uh, those. Uh, folders or those creatives those that have higher engagement rate and uh, click through rate and use those as to use those to label your position so you you, you label your position so for example now you you will you will build a knowledge base that that knows how to critique uh, where to place a logo so let's say you place a logo in the middle and your critique should actually understand uh, your knowledge base enough to say this is the wrong position so is that clear and also this is uh the answer for uh, thomas again's question so what should be the evaluation metric for the critic agent so uh mostly the critic agent uh, needs to understand where to place uh, assets so it has to know enough based on uh based on what you actually are prepared with uh, go on, okay. So if that's the case, like so, when we give when we give the instr after the automated system is uh, completed, so do we give it all the assets? Like by saying it is logo, it is uh, the image text. This is a click button. So otherwise, how can it know? So like it only knows the position, right? Based on what you said. Yeah, now let's say you, you detected a way to place a logo from the already given assets, right? Yeah, but how does it know it is a logo? Like, like it only knows the position of the logo, not the logo, right? Yeah, but you you, you have a logo. So you know what a set is, right? So for example, this is a logo. So now we, when you think where to place a logo, you should give it a logo you just don't give it an image or you have to actually uh, create another part that can detect and tell you if it's a logo or not so that's really uh, not uh, useful right now so you have to tell it this is the logo and i'm placing it right here so or i placed it right here so how do you treat it this that's that's the approach you should, uh, i said that's my suggestion actually so, so okay so finally let's say we have an asset like we, we can use a given asset so 
another uh, image so based on based on that like can can it know the this is the like maybe it, it, it can know the positioning of all the elements in the frame but i don't think it can know which one is the logo which one is the background image which one is the object based on like based on only knowing the position yeah your knowledge base is just positions right so where to place it if you actually uh, created a knowledge base that, that will uh, that will have uh, let's say for example a higher uh, order of knowledge so which means uh, it it understands what logo is and also it understands uh, what a cta button is so but your your knowledge base would be like so it just has a position of a logo so you have to tell it if it is a logo your asset is a logo or your asset is a city or your asset is a city, uh, text your asset is a uh, another object your asset is a human you have okay. to tell it okay so if that's the case what is it uh, like uh, in the documentation there is categories to take so what does categories mean if not labeling i thought that was the labeling part in the assets you right there are 23 of in the category background logo call of action something like that so how, how can we use that in the asset so you can actually do that for uh, the, as i've said uh let's say you can tell a logo from the file name right most of them have that but if you can't find uh or if you can't take which one was the logo maybe use that to label but most of them actually have in the challenge data dot zip file and in each uh, directory you can find uh, let's say for example there is a background there is a logo and you can use it so if, if it has a logo in it the file there's a logo if, if it has a button in it it's, it's a city a button you can approach it by that way or you can as Mahabuba asked, asked, you can label it, but labeling it would, would take a longer time. So I suggest you use all the already contained texts. Uh, okay, uh, go on. Oh yes, thank you. Uh, and uh, uh, and uh, based on my understanding, we have two two agents: one that compose and the one that evaluates or that critics the the image or the the frame that is built. And so I have two questions. Uh, the first one: uh, Is there any suggestion that uh, how we should com compose the the the, the ad frame maybe like I, I may have repeated the question but like uh, based on my understanding we use like object detection ocr and other techniques to get the sense of the assets and uh, the image then we will uh, we will compose uh, those images into an ad frame and uh and, and and then like and then the critic would evaluate and give suggestion on how to improve that ad frame so that it could uh, uh, be included in that report. Also, my second question is like, what is the end product? Like, what what should we use to d demonstrate our, pro our 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 progress or our our work? Are we going to use a notebook to to demo that? Uh, outcome or like to redevelop a funding to that can do some things like is my question uh, okay uh, on the how to uh, a suggestion for the comp composing part so uh, before like try to use the critic uh, in order for just uh what the positions part of it. So for example, you don't build the image first. So let's say you have a certain frame and you have assets. You don't build, but you just uh, generate positions in a way that uh, the LLL just could 
could create it in a way. So for example, let's say it says, oh, this is a 10 of a 10 of, uh, out of 10. So and then uh, when it's when the grade is above a certain so threshold, you will proceed to the composing okay. part. So I suggest that approach would be uh, a much uh, finer approach. And for your uh, the last product to, to be part, uh, I think try to come up with uh, a UI if if you can and if it's if it is uh, if it's feasible. Uh, I think uh, you can't like you can't generate image in this sense. But let's say you 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 accepted assets. So for yeah. example, you accept there is a UI that you uh, you accept, or there is a form that has a logo that has uh, all the all the files in the category. So background image, logo icon call to action text elements and like around five or six elements and from that you construct the frame and also you will you will ask the user how how many storyboards it, it, it needs so based on that you just uh, try to place those images using this algorithms okay. this is my suggestion uh thank you and uh let me go back to the first question and about the condition now uh, the files contain uh, several uh, assets like the challenge document you guys shared us like and uh so like we should use that to to, to initially draft to to uh i don't know to, to critique it and to suggest like uh to suggest like a better alignment and then going to the condition right like I'm just trying to make sure that and that that's uh how you build your, your knowledge base so as i've as i've said so for example let's say for uh for a certain creative you have uh <clears throat> you have all the like the pre the preview is there so from the preview you can actually uh get where the cta button is located where the logo is located and from all that and from all the uh creatives that have uh, a higher CTA in the performance data says VPI, you pick, let's say you, you pick 100 or you pick, a, let's say 150, so that have a higher engagement and a, high, a higher CTA. And from that, you build your knowledge base. So now your critic knows where to place a logo, your critic knows where to place a, an, a certain object so let's say for example from the categories text your, your critic should know where to place those and that's how you build your knowledge base and you use your load to detect uh, positions from a certain image you, you have to image and you use your load to detect another one to detect something from an image and based on that you you build the positions or now you understand where to place the logo now you understand your knowledge base has enough knowledge or enough data to decide or to say oh yes this is a correct place for a logo and this is a correct place for uh, cta but maybe if it's a clear rubber yes 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 and uh, one one last question what should be what exactly should be that knowledge base like is it a model or is it what is it what should we make uh, oh, okay. Mm. Maybe try to find it, an easier way to actually make your uh, like while you are composing it. Try to find a let's say you pass it a logo and it knows it already knows like some maybe it's a model or, or not. No, it it will is just... not. A, I mean, let me let me answer that one. Okay. Uh, okay. So. A knowledge base is basically any knowledge base that you can use, you can just extract from best practices in the internet. You know, that's one part of knowledge base. So in principle, and then the other part is that you have already um, ads that are composed. So you can actually extract pattern from that and define a knowledge base. So now, uh, so now that is like how you define it, you can just actually simply say like, okay, you know, in a number of logos, 
like the position is here and here and here in and position you know so it's about actually explaining so if you you know in a very simple term i think it's going to be a, a lot more expensive but if you just say like analyze the like the composite image so frame by frame for example if you just say like you know this is a storyboard um, for the llm and, and just tell me how they are composed now you can use that that one the description of that one is one knowledge base and the description of another is like basically chunk you can consider it now what you're trying to do is that is the description of what you have now what you're generating is it close to what you actually um, what is in that in the training set um, or what is actually defined that could be so in principle that can that is a very simple when is when we say knowledge base but of course just like if you want to make it a model then you can use that knowledge base or any other features that are best practice and then it would it basically can train any model that says okay you know i pass this thing and tell me if it is good or not right so but the knowledge base itself is not a, a model but what you can construct on top of the model um, and on top of the knowledge base a model that then classifies for you whether the composition is right or not or the composition and with and provides feedback if it's not does that make sense yeah yes it does thank you You may proceed next time. Okay. Uh, I was trying to ask the patients that uh, one okay. script, so that's great. But just to add some, uh, how, how much or uh, how many uh, storyboards are we supposed to use for the, uh, making our knowledge base? To take the uh, model or any knowledge base? The, Logo should be here and the uh, text should be here and something like that. Something like that. The knowledge base, the knowledge base uh, will not will be biased if we are not uh, precise on our uh, number of images uh, we are going to use for the training. Mm -hmm. uh, so, how are we going to uh, support to reduce this? Uh, maybe for that one, uh, try to use as many as possible. So just use um, those who have uh, higher engagement and higher uh, clicks through it. So if you use those, you, now you have a guarantee that uh, all the images that you have chosen have, uh, have, have been actually successful in, uh, in real time. So you can use that, that data. There is a clear data. Wow. That means we are uh, supposed to use our uh, our own image, mm -hmm. or I think the, we we should, we should we should supposed to use the uh, storyboards that have been shared with us. Yeah, yeah. So in the channel, uh, there are like folders. And based on those full bold, based on each folders, you have a uh, CTA mm -hmm. for each one. So, for example, for the there is a game ID in the performance, yeah, CTA yeah, file, yeah. In the performance yeah. data file, yeah. and that game ID represents yeah. folder in the channel uh -huh. data. <laughs> so use use that to map uh, to map the engagement and the CTR for each folder. Okay. Okay. Uh, good morning. So first, I didn't understand uh, what Nathaniel you said previously on ETR and CTA. But uh, for my first question also uh, again is that. On the there's the concept the JSON file and uh, so I'm asking uh, what could it be used for? I'm seeing that there's many repetition of like uh, I don't know one like one ad but in different uh, create creative creative ways like for Lego City I'm seeing most of it so I'm assuming now it doesn't cover every every 
every asset or every story wall that you can create for different ads and products. So is it like only an example for the few? Um, yeah, or uh, we could elaborate on, on that. And then, so the knowledge base that the agents must have, um, is that the, is this is is it this concept Jason that entails the process of uh, how the story the story the story of the ad must ha, must go and then the 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 critique will uh, see if it matches that and then and then co correct the the generator the one composing so um, could you elaborate on that kindly. Okay, for the CTR, CTR and engagement rates. So uh, ER means engagement rates, and these are uh, actual ads that have been, uh, that have run uh, in real time. So we have real time engagement rate data and real time click through rate. So click through rate is, let's say you have a button in your, uh, let's say in your intro screen, and the rate, the rate that button has, will be clicked or and also will be clicked and proceed to the next screen or the next uh, frames is the click through rate. And the engagement rate is uh, like, you, you won't skip the ad, so you just watch the ad, you might not engage with it. I mean, you might not like, uh, you might not click the button or click, but like, uh, you actually uh, uh, maybe somehow watch the ad or like, engaged with with it but the click through rate actually represents maybe you have a button at the end and uh, i i mean like uh, 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 let, let me clarify here so ctr means uh there is uh, some button and you just clicked it and move on the next, to the next stories or to the next tricks and engagement means there is uh let's say an end button or uh, for the, for the last screen, there is maybe order now or visit our site, that's an engagement. And for the next CTA is call to action, I'm saying uh, click through it. Call to action is the last button, so using CTA, you engage right. So maybe, uh, yeah, we can clarify if I'm mistaken. But... I mean, it, it is it is a call to action, true, but it's where it appears, right? But mostly when we say, the it, uh, I mean, I, I I'm just joining, and I didn't hear the question, so maybe I am, I might be giving a wrong answer. So maybe what was the question? Uh, engagement rate and clicks through rate. Ah, so CTR and CTA are different. CTA is just the call to action. CTR normally is the like the click through rate, right? So and that is whenever we we think of CTR, we are thinking of the last like the engagement. So CTA can be normally the engagement area, the call to action. We may refer. I mean, I think it's referred in the document. Uh, you know how it appears. So the engagement area you can still call it the call to action, but that is much more of a general term. And but when it appears in the first frame and you click it, it is in, it's considered engagement. An impression is the first part that actually you observe. Even when you observe, it means there is a data. I don't think you have it, but when when there is impression um, in your data or anywhere, what you, what it means is when it is loaded in the DOM, or that basically means in the browser, and that it is in a visible state. And then when a person clicks it and actions start like you know some some stuff happen video happens then that's called engagement and then after the engagement window finish there is a call to action and that call to action is cons and any click in that it is registered as ctr or the click through rate and the your usual rates whenever you have like now evaluating impressions are large so of course and you usually have, let's say, an average 10% engagement, which means out of a thousand uh, times this ad is loaded in the browser, 10 people are engaging with it. 
And then normally there are two files. So CTR is again estimated from the number of times that people reach there and click that CTA uh, divided by, of course, the number of impressions that is called. And then there is ECTR. Um, I don't think you have that, but if you have that ECTR, it basically means the number of clicks through with respect to engagement. So that again, normal is 10%. So if you think of it, then the CTR actually is about 1% in average. So, or, you know, if, if, you, if it's more than 1%, it's good. So that means one, one, com, one click through rate out of 100 is considered good. I hope that addresses the question. Yeah, Hilary, you can. Okay. Um, yeah, it, uh, it, it clears uh, what I had in mind. I had confused CTR and CTA. So mm, when it, <coughs> what I was asking initially was CT, the CTR and the ER, we, uh, we have to use them. Uh, we have to use them with the agent. Uh, okay, the agent have to use them to perform the analysis, uh, the grading, I think. Is that the case? And um, also, it's, it's a very good. Let, let me just you. How's how are you designing it? Like so, in a way, in part, there are two in your rubrics. There are two things. One is actually that it is uh, aesthetically fine, right? That there aren't overlaps. So that means basically the sanity check. So the composition or the analysis, you know, uh, um, that part is one. And then the other part is the composition that leads to higher performance. That's a second optimization. That means now, if you have now 10 compositions that make sense, you know, that are reasonable, out of them, which one is actually leads to a higher, um, basically, KPI? We, we usually refer to those engagement rate, um, you know, CTR, all of that as um, KPIs. So then you can actually optimize. Second optimization is called KPI. So if already, if you can do it, the first one, that is, I would say, really a big win. And if you can do it, the second one, that's really great. Yeah, go on, uh, Hilary. Okay. Uh, keep questions, keep coming. Uh, so apologies for taking up much time. Uh, I was, um, so if we have the engagement, the user have to ask to engage, uh, we do have to create a certain way to know that the user has engaged, like a, a click. Don't, so don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that because that part is the system will take care of. They are called tags. So, so you know, we are saying it will simulate. Or no, no. It, uh, it is a, a complex, there is a tool, I mean, um, there's a tool that just basically adds onto your frame when it's composed. So they, they have, for example, Adludio have its own engine that takes your frame and does, so for example, the click, you know, click this is actually maybe is called something, tap this is another, but uh, giving a trajectory is physics, for example, bouncing. So they have engines that simulate this, that does that on the browser. And that browser in that one, it has a tag. That means it is dynamically sending, firing. And so it's a, it has a tracker. So whatever happens in that event, if you watch video every five seconds, it is actually sending, you know, that this user, you know, watching this is now at the three second, you know, at the five second, at the 10 second, like that or this user is the browser is loaded. So these are called tags. And, and so each of these tags have trackers. So you should not worry about that. Okay, uh, so that too, so because I saw uh, the preview link in the performance C CSV file, there's a H index HTML you can, you can see and interact with the ad. Uh, so that one I was, uh, that's why I was asking, because you have that index HTML. Does it generate that automatically? And Yes. Uh, so it, it, it has add, a JavaScript in Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, anyone with a question? Hey, Jarvis. 
Okay, uh, I'm having uh, trouble to understand the performance data. So I understand now the ER and CTR what uh, they mean, but the, the preview link, uh, link and the game ID, uh, I think Nathaniel said the game ID is for the directory. Uh, maybe uh, I, I, I don't understand the two columns, the game ID and the preview link. I mean, so the game ID, yeah, so in the preview link, there is a game ID, right? It's uh, the preview link is basically S3 something something, game ID something something, right? So the game ID is what defines what basically is distinguishing the, the folder. So normally we actually call them games. Each, each ad is called games. And each version will have, of course, inside a game, you might have actual different versions and they, they can have different game ID. But we usually, when we refer one just add that is complete, that's that's called game. So you can imagine it's game IDs basically that the ID for the, that game. So now, when you do, when you are generating a link, the link will have, as you can imagine, a game ID. Is that is that clear? Uh, yes, I think so. So the the game ID is actually the the ad is that the ad yes the, ad the whole folder? ad so whatever okay. yeah whatever inside you, you know it normally will have javascript it will normally have assets it will have other things so together when it's loaded it knows the browser i mean with within the engine so if there is a mini engine that adludio has it knows how to combine them um, and do stuff so so normally it's before basically basically before zipped that you you know so in the browser it's loaded like that and if you can actually see what is loaded in the browser when you when you are loading uh, the preview you can see in the storage what is stored and stuff in the local storage so yes okay the quick answer is that it is yeah it is it's at folder Okay, then the the score, the ER and the CTR are the scores for the that uh, ad. So yes. it's like the preview, the preview. Uh, so in evaluation. That from the preview, from the preview, you can actually generate game ID, right? Because the game ID, I think, as I said, the preview link will have game ID. So whether you have a game ID or a preview link, you can go from one to the other. They usually have the same pattern. So that means. A uh, preview link is just basically some constant thing made, and and then you insert the game ID to it. And a game ID is just that game ID. You know? So it's not. So if I give you both, you can actually transform one from the other. Okay. So the uh, what I mean is the engagement rate, for example, is the rate of the ad itself. Yes. So this ad has been loaded, has been being seen by many people and you know in a different campaigns a number of campaigns it might appear in one campaign two campaigns three campaigns but after that yes you will estimate from the number of impressions you will have so that means impressions means the number of times it's loaded in the browser engagement means the number of times users who loaded that game interacted and then ctr is the number of times the end screen cta is clicked okay so now what we want to do is uh, how are we going to use it on the llm so is the llm gonna check this I mean, no, no, not everything is llm right so this one is much more to factor once you have earlier i was explaining once you have a good composition you can determine like if you generate now if you have multiple uh, versions that can lead to a strategy that can lead to a good composition, you can use the performance data to actually select one that gives you a high performance. Now, how do you know that? Because by comparing your strategies that leads closer in a vector space sense and a semantic sense, for example, to like a strategy that gives you to higher performing compositions, you can attribute it to be the, the good strategy. So you, you will not do on one, but 
again, now you will have to do statistics. So if I have like two strategies, I applied these two strategies and they get two compositions. Now I will say like, okay, I will then measure between these two compositions that are generated and the actual that has run. And then I would say, which one is actually closer, right? And then the strategy that in, in average, it gives me more ads, more games that are performing, you know, so that would, that would win. So it's a statistics more. Statistical analysis. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, what I guess you are saying is that, for example, if I filter out the top uh, ads with the ER and CTR, then I will have to, in some way, represent them maybe in vector store. Then my target is the, I have a strategy to build an ad. Then I will this strategy, and I'm gonna compare using maybe an agent. This my strategy no, and no, the top so one. If, it, if you have if you have only one strategy, there is no benefit in performance data. Only if you have multiple strategies. Okay. So because otherwise, you know, it, it, you only measure what is actually reasonable. But if you have multiple strategies, then you can do. So again, this is the detail. I mean, unfortunately, I have to drop now. But uh, we can continue if I, when I finish the other poll, uh, maybe. I, but so this part is much more of like the performance. You, you, if you have only one strategy, you live with it. That's it. And you, you can only say, you know, how often this strategy gives me, um, you know, closer to higher performing. So you can only estimate something. But if you have two strategies, you can actually sometimes determine that, I, as I said, we can, if there are some questions, Q and A is necessary after this call, after my call, I can, I can join. Um, and then we can, if those people whose question can join as well. Fortunately, okay. I have to go. Cheers, guys. Yeah. Thank you. So I think, so should we have a session later? Uh, guys, what do you think? Okay, I think that's just about in a VCIB. Abdurrahman? Uh, sorry, before uh, we end the meeting, uh, uh, many terms make me confused here. So can you re-explain uh, composition and terms? Yeah, uh, anyone who can answer him? What, what, what is the question again? So... Uh, can you explain uh, what compositions and terms mean exactly? What is composition? That's the question. Yeah. So, so composition is uh, co combining this image to for some purpose, for some advertising purpose. You will connect these assets that you have to come up with some meaningful adverse frame. So this composition, you have to position assets inside of an, uh, in another asset to come up with a very meaningful frame. Is that clear or? Yeah, that's clear. Uh, what's about frame? That is the frame. When uh, Once you end with one particular image that has different components above it, you will have a frame. Okay, thank you. Uh, from uh, from my understanding now, uh, the frame is uh, the output of of compositioning uh, two images, for example. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Nothing. Is there anything you can add up on this one? Okay. I don't think he's on the call either. So. Uh, no, I would hear, but yeah. You, you, you. I, I don't have anything to add on that. Okay, so, great. So, uh, can I get again second confirmation that maybe after the was finished with his meeting, so we can leave up again? Okay, so we will schedule another call for a QA and a session later on. Yeah. If you don't have any more to say from training, I think we can end this one and take a look at.
have a good day. They come up with questions for later.